So this is a question from the 2013 BC exam, and it's problem number five. This is a non-calculator question, and this was the problem on the 2013 exam that was kind of half AB topics, half BC topics. Uh, if we check out what number five starts us out with, they give us this differential equation right here. They tell us y equals f of x is the particular solution to the differential equation with this initial condition. So when x is zero, y is negative one. In part A, they want us to evaluate this limit. So the limit is x approaches zero, f of x plus one over sine of x, and then show the work that we use to get our answer. Well, if you want to try to do this by determining what f of x equals, you know, solve this differential equation and actually determine what expression goes in place of f of x, part a is going to take a decent amount of time. And if you do do it that way, you're actually doing part c, which tells you to solve the differential equation uh, before you're answering part a. It's not necessarily wrong to go that route, but the easiest way to do part A, the, the quickest way to do part A without solving the differential equation, is to do this how you would evaluate any limit. And that would be to hope you get lucky by taking the value x is approaching, put it in place of the x's, and see what happens. And when we do that here, we get f of 0 plus 1 in the numerator over sine of 0. Well, sine of 0 is 0. The nice thing about f of 0 appearing right here they tell us what f of 0 is. They tell us that's negative 1. So that gives you the indeterminate form 0 over 0. Uh, if you recognize that you're able to apply L'Hopital's rule here, uh, the derivative of this numerator is going to be f prime plus 0, and then the derivative of the denominator is going to be cosine of x. Now try to reevaluate the limit, so put 0 in place of the x's that you see on this line, and what you get in the numerator is f prime of 0, what you get in the denominator is cosine of 0, cosine of 0 you get a value of 1 for, and then you need to know what f prime of 0 is. Well that's this derivative evaluated at the x of 0, and we know that at the x of 0 y is negative 1. So if we put negative 1 in place of this y, we put 0 in place of this x, we evaluate, we get an answer of 2, put that in place of f prime of 0 in that numerator, and then 2 over 1 is of course 2. In part b they ask us to use Euler's method, and they want us to start at x equals 0 and then use two steps of equal size to figure out an approximation for f of 1 half. Well, to, to do this, you're going to need to know the algorithm for Euler's method, which is right here. We are going to generate a new y value by taking the previous y value and adding to it the slope of the tangent line at the previous ordered pair times the distance between the x values we're using. This is sometimes refers to, referred to as our step size when you're using Euler's method. Sometimes it's represented with an h. So I, I recognize if I kind of construct my work in table form here, I'm starting with an x of 0 and I'm working toward an x of 1 half with two steps of equal size. That tells me that each step is going to have to be 1 quarter units long. I want to, before I make my estimate for y of 1 half, I want to make my estimate for y of 1 fourth. So my, my y at 1 fourth is going to be found by taking the y value at the previous ordered pair plus the slope of the tangent line at the previous ordered pair. So I actually stole, the, stole a little piece of the work from part A to, to get 2 in place of dy dx evaluated at 0, negative 1 here. And then times the step size. Well, the step size is just delta x, which is 1 fourth. And then if you evaluate that, you get negative 1 half. So now we have a complete ordered pair. And we want to go one step further to figure out an estimate for y of 1 half. So we're going to take the previous y. Uh, so the y value that we're trying to estimate right here, which you already see the value of, uh, we're going to take the previous y, so negative 1 half, we're going to add to that the slope of the tangent line evaluated at the previous ordered pair. Now this does get kind of ugly. You're putting negative 1 half in place of this y, you're putting 1 fourth in place of this x, and then you have to kind of evaluate that and simplify it. And if you do that successfully, this gets you to positive 1 fourth when you square negative 1 half. And then if you evaluate this, you get positive 5 halves. And then the step size is still 1 fourth. If you went ahead and did some arithmetic here, you get negative 11 over 32. And that would be our estimate for y of 1 half. And then in the last part of this, this is the part that was overlapping with AB topics. This is something that you could have done at the conclusion of calculus AB. Euler's method and L'Hopital's rule are exclusive to the BC course for the time being. 
Uh, in part C, they ask us to find the particular solution. So if you separate your variables, you would just divide by y squared. You would multiply by dx. Your variables are separated. Integrate on this side, and you get this pretty quickly. It's just some power rule there. And then x is going to the, the side of the equation that contains the x's is going to be the side that we eventually push everything to. So that is the side we want to represent our constant of integration on. And then over here, the, the trap that people sometimes fall into would be to look at this and to write down the answer, natural log of the absolute value of y squared. That's definitely not the case. Uh, this 1 over y squared can be represented as y to the negative second. Add 1 to that power, you get to a power of negative 1. Divide by the new power, divide by negative 1 gives you a negative coefficient. And if you simplified this a little bit, push the y to the denominator, change the sign on the fraction, excuse me, change the sign on the exponent. And then we want to try to solve this for y. So if you multiply by y and then divide by this quantity here, you get negative 1 over x squared plus 2x plus c. What is your value of c? Well, putting this value in place of x and this value in place of y, and then solving for c, you're going to get a c value of 1. And here is your particular solution. This right here is a, a way to specify that you find the solution explicitly, right? Y has to equal some function of x. Y has to equal some formula that contains x's. So although they don't say to find the explicit solution uh, in words, symbolically they do tell us to find that explicit solution. So that is number five from the 2013 exam.